Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the chi-square, and the chi-square as a kind of mathematical judge of probabilities, or the likelihood that different ratios of people or events simply happen by chance. And the last thing we did is to introduce you to the chi-square formula, in which chi-square is equal to the sum of the square deviations divided by the expected value, and the deviations being observation minus expectation. Divide, squared divided by expectation. Okay, so now what we want to do in this video is actually just take you through that for this one simple example of gender ratios in two different classes. We're going to go through and recalculate each piece of it, the O, the E, the O minus E squared, the sum, and eventually the chi square. And then we're going to give a little bonus at the end to talk about finally what in the world is a degree of freedom. Okay, so let's go and let's talk about calculating expected values. So remember, to find the expected values, what we assume is that the proportion of females to males are going to be the same across both groups. In other words, our expected values are the null hypothesis, that these females to males are going to be the same no matter what. So for this example, we'll look to our total column for our proportions over here. Although, I should say, we could just as easily look at the proportion of, when we look at all the males, um, what proportion of males do we think are going to be in this class versus this class? But to think about it more logically, I'm going to use this. And just so you know, the numbers come out the same either way. So we're going to use the more logical one, which is gender ratios totally in our total sample. Okay, so the way that we did that was to look at what is the total amount of all of our participants who are females and the total number of all of our students who are males. And what we found was 53% are females and 47% is males. And then what we do is we multiply each column total, so each, each of these column totals down here, by each one of the percentages in order to find the expected value. We multiply, a so for instance, for the expected value here, we look down to the column total, and we look over to the percentage in order to find the expected value. Okay, So here we do 0.53 times 21. In other words, we expect just like 53% of all of our subjects are female, we expect 53% of all of our 391 to be female. So 0.53 times 21. We do the same thing down here with our males. We Because 47% of our population is male, we expect 47% of our class to be male. So we multiply those out and uh, we end up getting an expected value. Now I'm going to show you really quickly. So here, um, in fact, I'll, I'll show you this on the next slide because we can also just multiply the column total by the row total and divide by the overall total. So let me show you really quick. So here, um, the first way that we did it was to do 0.53 times 21. And as we found out before, 0.53 times 21 is going to give us 11.1. Okay, so this is just this just came from an earlier slide. But let, let's go back to this one. Because the second way to do it is to take, if we want to find the expected value for right here, what we're going to do, another way to find out the same thing is to remember, multiply the column total by the row total and divide by the overall total. So let's look at it. So what we can do is, if we're looking to find the expected value here, a second way to do it is to just go column total times row total, 21 times 19, divided by the overall total. Okay, so you can just go down total times total, divided by overall total. That's another way to find the expected value. And why does this make sense? Well, remember that percentage of 53%? So if we do, uh, how do we get that 53%? We just divided 19 by 36 to begin with. Well, look right here. 19 by 36 is right there. And 
how do we find the percentage of our female percentage of our class that we expected to be females? We just multiplied our class total by that percentage right here. So really we're doing the same thing. So whichever way you want to remember it is is fine. So you can do column total times row total divided by overall total. But in any case, we find expected values for each one of these. And those are the ones that we had before. So now we have our observations and our expectations for each single cell. Remember, that's all we need to solve for our chi-square is O and E. The rest of it is just math. Okay, So let's calculate chi-square using this formula. So remember, here are observations and our expectations. And here's that formula, O minus E squared divided by E. So remembering our order of operations from like fifth grade, we start with the inmost brackets here. And we want to start with our O minus E. Remember, this is also called our deviation. So we're going to start with our deviation first, with our observation minus the expectation for a single cell. So let's take the first cell. How would we calculate this one right here? If you answered 15 minus 11.1 .1 observation minus expectation, you're right. 15 minus 11.1 .1 equals 3.9. So our deviation for this first one, deviation equals 3.9. So our O minus E equals 3.9. So now what comes next? Well, following our order of operations out, we've calculated our deviation. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to square this value. Okay, so 3.9 squared, what would this be? If you got your calculators out, 3.9 squared would be 15.34. Okay, so we have 15.34. Now, the last step, we've done all of this, and the last step for this one is we simply need to divide 15.34 by E or by our expected value. So remember, our expected value here was 11.1, .1, that's 53% of 21 is 11.1. .1. So we just divide this deviation squared by our expected value, and what we get is 1.38. Okay, so this is our squared deviation divided by the expectation for females in 391. Now we've done it once, that's really it, except now we're just going to do it three more times. So we have 1.3 for that. We're going to do the same thing for all the other cells. So I'm not going to take you through that process, but every other cell is going to have an O, it's going to have an E, we're going to square it and divide it by E. But because it's a different observation, a different expectation, then we're going to end up with different numbers. So we have one of these values for every single cell. What's the last thing we do? Well, our last thing that we do is we simply sum it up. Remember, chi-square is the sum of all of these squared deviations divided by E. So we sum up all of these, 1.38 plus 1.94 plus 1.55 plus 2.77 gives us a chi-square value of 7.03. Okay, the last question is, so is this real? Is it significant? Is it not? What does 7.03 mean? Is it big? Is it small? So the last thing we need to do is we need to use the degrees of freedom to look up our chi-square value in a critical values table. Okay, so before we can test for significance, we need to know the degrees of freedom. So you may be asking what the crack is a degree of freedom anyway. Likely you're wondering this. What is a degree of freedom? Remember earlier I said I will tell you what a degree of freedom is later? Well, let me give you a short answer and then let me give you the more complex answer. So the short answer for chi-square is degrees of freedom can be calculated simply by taking the number of columns here, one, two columns, minus one, so 
2 minus 1 equals, oops, equals 1 times the number of rows, 1, 2 minus 1 equals 1. So here, the degrees of freedom equals 1 times 1, which is 1. That's the easy way. So on a, on a chi-square, it's columns minus 1 times rows minus 1. Okay, here's the more complex answer. Are you ready for it? It's going to be delightful. The more complex answer is the number of different elements in a set that are free to vary. So you may be saying, that sounds nice, but it makes no sense to me at all. What in the world do you mean? What stops an element from varying? Because here, it looks like, I'll, first of all, let me show you the different elements in a set. Here's one element, here's two, here's three, here's four. You have four elements in a set. Seems like all those could vary. You might have, oh, and what you'll notice really quick is, I did it again. Um, these are slightly different proportions of males versus females. This is another year that I did 391. Sorry about that, but we'll come back to it later. But, um, so it's actually a perfect example. Some of these things are free to vary, right? 14, it could have 15 females, right? It seems like you could have 10 males or five males or one male in the class. Why aren't all of them free to vary? Okay. It turns out that in statistics, what stops an element from varying is the use of means or, in our case here, totals to perform our statistics. So we have totals like a column total, the total number of people in a class, the total number of participants in the whole study, the total number of females, the total number of males. So let's take just one of those. For instance, if we know that there are 21 people in Psych 3091, and we know that there are 15 females, there can only be six males. Because if we've said there's 21 people and 15 of them are female, well then the other six have to be male, at least if we're using females and males as our two categories here. Not only that, Let's take a look at this. Let's say we have, we know that there's 36 people total because we've used these row columns or row totals and columns totals. So now we have 36 people total. Let's actually just try switching this around for a second. Let's say, let's actually vary this. Let's use our degree of freedom. It's not 15. We are gonna, we're gonna go crazy here. And let's say, that, let's, let's go opposite day. Let's actually say it's closer to Four. Let's say there's four females in 3091. Well, we still have three more elements. Seems like those can vary too, can't they? Well, not so much, because here, if there's four females and 21 total people, well, this has to be 17. That wasn't free to vary. If there's four females and 36 total people, and this is 21, so in other words, if we have 19 over here, there's four females, well shoot, this has to be 15. That's not free to vary. And if this is 15, and there's 15 total people in the class, well, all of a sudden, this isn't free to vary. So now, or sorry, yes, now this isn't free to vary. And so now it looks like we have 17 males, zero, zero males in this class, four females over here, 15 females in this class, and only one of these, only one of these was free to vary. We only have one degree of freedom. Once we set one of the values here, all the other ones are set automatically because we're using these row and column totals. Okay, so if we set here, uh, and there's a lot of other ways that we can do that. So let's test for significance now. So first of all, we take our degrees of freedom, which is columns minus one times rows minus one. In other words, two minus one times two minus one, which equals one. Now what we're gonna do is compare our chi-square statistic to the critical values for chi-square tests. That's table E2 in your book, or you can find this just by Googling critical values for chi-square on the internet. And what we'll find is for the degrees of freedom for one and the p-value, p is less than 0.05, the, chi the critical value is 3.84. 
Remember, we talked about this before, and we think about this critical value as a hurdle. Here's my hurdle, my Olympic hurdle. And what our value has to do is it has to jump over this. So ours has to be greater than 3.84 in order to be significant. Okay, our chi-square is 7.0, oops. Our chi-square, sorry about that, is 7.03. That is greater than 3.04. So we say these differences in proportion to males to females is significant. In other words, we reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference in male to female ratios, and we accept the alternative hypothesis that these two classes are different. And that's in essence what a chi-square is. Now, on the last video that you're gonna watch, I'm gonna have you take you through one of the worksheets that I'm gonna have you fill out, and then we're gonna talk about this worksheet in class. But I want